sorry, what was I doing? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, you know, a taxpayer here in the state of New Hampshire, has two little boys in elementary school. And Michael reached out to me about six weeks ago and he said, T, I have a teacher at pick up and drop off who is prancing around my car and trying to antagonize me. I believe it's because of my political beliefs. And he is a cross dresser and I have a girl, little girl, and I don't know what to do about this. I don't feel it's developmentally appropriate for my daughter to be confused with this. And I said, well, why don't you first just take it to the principal. To What's your name? Therese. T-E-R-E-S-E. -E. And my last name is Bastarash, B-A-S-T-A-R-A-C-H-E. And so why don't you bring it to the principal. Where do you live? I live in Loudoun, Loudoun and Concord Line. Um, bring it to the principal and see. Your children go to school in Loudoun? Yes. They with respect to any details to that, but I want to say because I've written yeah. an affidavit about that. But you yeah. can anything I do, like. anything I, you can come in after yep. me, correct yep. me with. She's just going to paraphrase it, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> give you the details that are sworn to in an affidavit that I presented to your, uh, your staff up there, and I've also emailed you. So I said, bring it to the principal's office. He brought it to the principal's office. And then directly after that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, the pick up and drop off became more animated. So now you have this art teacher, Silas Allard, prancing around his car and being very- Not angry. around my car, on the sidewalk in front of the school, but they're directing his attention directly to me. And I'm sure you have cameras in the school that can confirm that. And I would respectfully request that any and all be preserved. Any and all hey, cameras be preserved. Hold on a minute. I want to hear from you, okay? I'm fine with that. Well, I'm, at, I'm, I'm putting that on record right now. I, I want no, all no, no. documentary Listen, evidence my, my, preserved. No, let her finish. Okay, uh, that's fine. The emotions be, are high. I'll, I'll be, you'll be hurried, but you're going to let her talk. I can't do her. So I'll go quickly and then you I'm can just, I'm just making a stipulation, so, that's all. Things exasperate, and he goes, what do I do now? And I said, well, bring it to the school. So no, superintendent. Bring it to the superintendent. Just keep escalating it up. That was last week about, and next thing you know, he now has a restraint order put on him for picking up and dropping off his daughter at the school. And the restraint order, I look at the language in that, it makes absolutely no sense that he would have a restraint order. And a trespass. And now the eight-year-old little girl can't even go to school. In the meantime, we go on to look up this teacher. And what we found was horribly disturbing. I saw all of it. I used to. We have one, all just for the record, I mean, we've got drug use, we've got one where, hey, he's, you're, on your lap, you're out of condoms, when you out of condoms, but he's drunk enough to risk it. So you're going to have, you're going to take advantage of somebody who's impaired and give them potentially an STD. That's, that's this gentleman. And then, what three, what what three year, attributes, what, what, what are the years on that? does that matter? Yes, it does to me. It does it, what does it say on it, You know, to me, I, knew that, I, know. I know that. Well, you guys are going to dismiss no, it. It no, was 2017 for the record. But you're, there's things that are more recent. You're recording. If yeah. you want the information accurate, all I'm asking you is if you okay. can repeat what's on there. So when you get, when you out of condoms, that he's so drunk the, enough to the, risk the, it. And I'll say it. Then the dates on those um, emails. Twitter's yeah, we're done. We're done. Yeah, Let's go. Just, no, so we're done talking. Go ahead, Michael. We're, we're, we're done. done. What three attributes would you use to describe yourself? Evil, diabolical. You're gonna, you're gonna excuse me. When you don't care that your family member died, you don't care that your dog ran away, but your drug dealer gets caught. That's a big deal. I hope God watches me master me. <clears throat> Someone gets, um, if you can order weed on Amazon. When your country is is up, but you're too stoned, it's okay now. This one, picking up boys 101 with a small child. It doesn't matter whether this is yesterday or five years ago. This is not someone that should be prancing around a father's car when he's simply trying to drop off and pick up his daughter. I don't care what your political beliefs are. I don't care what your religious beliefs are. I don't care what your sexuality is. But these are impressionable small little children. And those things need to be left at the door. There's a certain level of professionalism that needs to come into that classroom. But these children are not confused. This is developmentally not appropriate for a child not to understand, Daddy, why is he dressed in girls' clothing? Gender dysphoria is, is harming this generation. Kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grader does not need to be exposed to that. 
We can teach tolerance. We can teach to love every human being for whatever choices they make. He has a history, 17 years in jail as a felon. And you know what? I still love him as a human being. I have family members who are LGBTQ. And I love and adore each and every one of them. But when it comes to our children, we don't need to have someone that's telling them what their costume when it's sex toys or flaunting or retaliating with a, a restraint order that prevents this little girl from being able to participate in Valentine's Day. That was a retaliatory act for this poor dad standing up and saying, I'm concerned that this man is developmentally appropriate for these young children. And he has a right to have that grievance brought forward and not have it dismissed. And as taxpayers, we're just saying, leave these things at the door until it's developmentally appropriate for them. I had a gym teacher. She was gay. We all knew she was gay. We adored her. We loved her. But she didn't flaunt it around. She didn't prance around at pick up and drop off and make everyone feel uncomfortable. This... <coughs> I don't know when he was hired by the school district. He obviously has taken down all of this. There's more stuff on TikTok. But this does show character. The part that scares me as a parent is he's admitting to being a sexual predator, and he's in our schools. He's admitting to it right there. He's a sexual William. predator. I'm Kevin. Kevin. Teresa's wife, same last name. Okay. I mean, Teresa's husband, same last okay. name. Thank you. <laughs> and and that, that's the part that upsets me. He's admitting to being a sexual predator. That's not okay. Yeah, not around my kids or any other kids. kids. You know, we have our own kids, but I care about all the kids. And when I heard this, I showed up. So that's not cool. I think an immediate hold on his job would be appropriate. Especially until this is investigated. Especially when there's a retaliatory I don't even just spend another day in that art room teaching little children. And he's admitting to being a predator. Especially when it's implementing that it's another child point. can't go to school. Who, who are you? I am Michael's nanny, and I also I, I am Jennifer Brigham. Thank you. I, I, I raised three children. I have a two-year-old, a three-year-old, and an eight-year-old that I have full custody of. Jennifer, you go ahead now. Are you live in Concord? Um, I live in Pittsfield, New Hampshire. Pittsfield? Yep. Thank you. Go ahead now. So... I feel like it's very hard for Michael and myself to bring Bella to school. How do we know that she, if he's being retaliated on, then how do we know she's not going to be? How do we know that her education is actually going to be the most important thing, just like every other child in that school? So currently we're contemplating the homeschooling for her. Um, but she's a child that wants to be around friends and it's not like my children are satisfied being middle school kids that don't want to deal with what's going on in New Hampshire schools. Cause it's not just Concord. It's, it's everywhere cause Pittsfield's having the same problem and I've been fighting them tooth and nail and got nowhere. So I've removed all three of my children, one of which is a foster child and two of which are mine and my husband's biologically. But Bella, I've talked to her to try to see if she wants to go on the same school platform as my kids and meet up with the homeschool platform so we can do school dances, movie nights, and she just doesn't want to. And I, I understand the school district is in a position of you can't discriminate based on someone's race, religion, or sexual preference. Like, I get that. But you shouldn't have someone who is, you know, really, really intense Christian prophesying, right? That you wouldn't allow that in the classroom. Like, there's a certain level of professionalism that needs to happen. And I know that you guys are stuck with the current laws of, you know, being slapped with a lawsuit. And, and, but when you look at this, I mean, it's, it's separate from anything else. I mean, this is just, I mean, there's got to be some sort of boundary as to what's professionally allowed in the classroom. And it should, the politics, the religion, and your sexuality need to be left at the door. And, you know, if you want to dress more feminine or more masculine, everyone is on a spectrum. As a nurse, I know that. We've got tomboys, we've got men that are feminine. That's fine. Dress whatever you want. But it needs to be professional. It can't be a tutu, you know, prancing around, you know, a 60-year-old father's car and, and trying to
trying to antagonize the situation. Like, that's just not professional. <clears throat> and then and what we're seeing here is just, I, I don't know that this man is healthy. So my understanding is that the restraining order was withdrawn. It was. Today. So so I want to be clear about that. The restraining order was withdrawn on Wednesday. So we only I'm found out that. we only found out this morning when we showed well, up at court for nine right. AM. So I his dad that's not my responsibility, but I was informed Wednesday evening, um, around five o'clock, that the um, uh, restraining order was withdrawn. Did so anyone was, call the I'm father? sorry that so I was not hold giving on, notice of my daughter Miss Moore School. Don't interrupt me, please. That that we were informed that it was withdrawn, and so um, the 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 issue then became the letter that I wrote relative to him on campus, and because I didn't have a letter. Because please don't interrupt me. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, but and and so I sent a certified letter. Um, indicating how we would handle Bella's uh, coming to school and drop off, and the need for her dad to meet with the nurse, meet with this school teacher, it, um, Bella's classroom teacher. Um, I talked to her classroom teacher uh, this week, and you know, so that we can keep up with her education. So um, I, I, I'm not sure why we're here today on Friday when all of these things have been put into place. Because okay, so you have a sexual predator working in your school system. Sir, please, please, I know you. That's a fact. So, man, that's a fact. No, ignore facts. So, three, so, three, one, one, three. so this father was retaliated. Do you know what it's like to get a restraint order that takes away your 2A, that takes away your ability to educate your child, that makes you be thrown and catapulted into feeling as though you've done something wrong for standing up for the safety of children? And he didn't get any awareness Wednesday night. None of us did. We didn't find out anything until we showed up at the court. He's been reaching out to you guys for the last month. Nobody picked up the phone Wednesday and said, hey, Michael, it's okay. The restraint order's been dropped. Uh, that restraint. was my, not my responsibility. Okay. Well, so, right. well, what's your responsibility? But what about being we human? We did not. Wait a minute. What about just Calm being courteous? I love the way you try to turn this. Yeah. So what are you we, trying to say? That my okay, daughter okay, okay, went okay, to heard, school for the last two days Mr. because Mr. you didn't inform me? If you can't stop I can't. And interrupting, then we're going to end the meeting. No problem. I want to hear from everybody, and I want to give you that voice. But you keep interrupting. Don't do it again. Or, or what? Or we're going to end the meeting. Seven. All right. Well, then I'm sorry that you feel that way. You are not ready to have this meeting with me then. I've been having, waiting, trying to have this meeting for the last four Can months we? since November when your principal filed the first complaint against me. He no way heard me. Please tell the whole story. Oh, yeah, let me tell the whole story. An opportunity. Oh, yeah, let, me, let me tell the whole story. Just go on. Go on. You Finish had your speech. You had an opportunity to meet with our Title IX compliance officer who spent time with you on the phone um, detail, in great detail what the ramifications were around your concerns. And so to say that we haven't done anything is 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 inaccurate. Did you look at this teacher's social media before you hired him? That's my question. That's my question right now. And why is he still in the classroom after I've seen what I've seen? Because this is not okay. That's the problem. All this other stuff, restraining order, that's water under the bridge. If Clockard, All these processes you guys are running through. If we're this spending, is the problem. If we're spending 60% of our property taxes and ten to $20,000 per child. You're not a resident of Concord. In the state of New Hampshire. I speak for the entire state of New Hampshire. If that's what we're spending on our children, and there's no background check to make sure that they're appropriate. And I could be a resident children, of Canada, and this is still wrong. Well, uh, Stop diverting the subject so you, you to other things. Set, right? I, I'll, I'll hear from you. Are you ready to talk? I am ready to talk. Okay, that's great. Let me lay out my so statement of facts here. I must not be do we tonight. look at social media yeah. before we yeah. hire? No. We do not look at social media before we hire. But I know this is going to be fired. That's that. something that needs to change. Yeah. I know we'll put legislation yeah. in because it needs to be looked yeah. at. All right, so we'll be visiting the Capitol. If you're protecting yeah. children, <laughs> this should be something that should be looked at in an interview process. It is for a nurse. They don't hire me without right. looking at my social media. Are you are you finished? Are you finished? I, I may go as long as I need to go. This is our children. No, you're not going to go as long as you need to go. Are you finished discussing so I can give time? I just like to know that you can guys I are not give time people. to him? Sure, he, of he's course. quite anxious. Go ahead, sir. All right, so let me tell you why we're here today. 
because I prepared to go to court for Friday. I filed a motion to expedite the stalking petition followed by the teacher, which is which, which I was served with on uh, Monday. I filed an expedited motion on Tuesday. I was granted a hearing for today. So I prepared for this hearing. I went to the court and there was no hearing. I was never notified that there was not a hearing. I, and I understand that that's not your function. I understand that. You don't work for the court. Somebody from the courtroom should have sent me a letter. Uh, with respect to the, you said you sent me a certified letter about my about my conduct on your on, on your mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't accept that for certified if you want to serve me serve me through a sheriff all right furthermore let me tell you how this goes so I started bringing to I got custody of this girl I, I've been fighting for custody of Bella for five years this child is not even my biological kid and I fought for her but since I raised her she was born in my, Born to me, I'm on the birth certificate. It was my duty and responsibility to take care of her, and I did. So I finally got custody of her from my mother, and, and you I was, don't have full custody though. Uh, well, we're, we're we're still arguing about that. Well, yeah. The court document I have says it's fifty fifty. It's not fifty fifty. Well, that's what the that's what so the she has. So says. Oh, now let me tell you what the court order says because I'm very familiar with it. Okay. I'm sure you are. She has incremental visitation rights starting with three months. One, one, three hours a day, then it goes to eight hours, excuse me, three hours a weekend for one, one day for four, for a month, then it goes to one month for eight hours, then it goes to for three months, and then for one month it goes to, eventually it goes to one weekend visit overnight, that's it. And we go back to court on March 30th to determine how this is going to go. And I'm going to be moving to terminate her parental rights because her son is moving to her son, who was also born to someone and raised by a man that is not his father. Wait, can I just ask, how is this relevant? Yeah. Why is this relevant and Why this are you isn't? interrupting? Because I no, have a question. You, you don't why have, is that no. relevant? Excuse me. All right, so let me get back to why I have custody, right? Okay. So, so I have custody, I I mean, I have custody of Bella. And, and on the 21st, her son, her 16-year-old son, is moving to terminate her rights. I will follow and do the same thing with the evidence from that hearing. So right now, I have full primary residential custody of that child until the court hearing on March 31st, all right? So I, I, was, I was happy to put my child, and when I found out it was the Kristen McAuliffe's girl, I was like, actually, because Kristen McAuliffe, she's an amazing being, you know? And let me tell you something, let me, let me go full circle, Kristen McAuliffe. In 1986, when the space shuttle shot up, I was standing in the bar in, in Valley Street Jail, behind bars, watching the space shuttle go up in the air, and w I watched it blow up, and I watched inmates start cheering, cheering that she was dead and that those people died. They were cheering the animals, and I turned on them, I said, you effing animals, man, you better shut, you better shut up now, I'm going to start hurting this. They shut up. It was, it was horrible. So let's fast forward to where I am now. So I get my, my daughter in the school, I mean, this is a beautiful thing, I mean, she's a role model. She, she sacrificed her life for, for the space exploration of this country. I mean, what better person could I have, you know, my daughter following? So I was proud to have her here. I, I come up to the school and I see, you know, you know, this was probably in October, and I see, I see the art teacher, you know, and he's, you know, he's dressed like a woman, you know, he's got a full beard, he's got dangling earrings, he's dancing around, he's very jolly and whatnot, and I, you know, and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm shocked. I mean, these are elementary school students. I'm like, why is there a, a cross-dresser here? That, and he's not even a cross-dresser. I mean, if he was a cross-dresser and doing that full-time, that would be one thing. I mean, he's, he's engaging in that sexuality. But this guy's got a full beard. Sometimes he's wearing male clothes. Sometimes he's wearing female clothes. It's complete confusion. The, the students love him, right? Whatever, that's fine. So I go and I want to see the principal about this. So uh, they won't let me see that. So um, I get a conversation with her on the phone. And she tells me, uh, well, you know, well, we can't discriminate against anybody's clothes. And, and all the students love him. I said, excuse me? I said, yeah, they, they may love him. And she said, and then she goes on to say, uh, and many of them identify with him. So I said, what are you, what, what are you kidding me? You're telling me that a 7, 8, 9, 10-year-old is identifying with a 6'4", 260-pound bearded cross-dresser. Is that what you're telling me? I said, Krista McAuliffe would be rolling over in her grave. And you know what this morning had the audacity to say? Oh, she was a very progressive woman. That Chris McAuliffe was a Sunday school teacher and a Catholic. She would never tolerate this. So I said, I'm done talking to you. And that's when I called your office. So I called your office and I was referred to the Title IX office. So so she spoke, we spoke about that. I understand, I understand 
collective bargaining. I mean, I understand all these different agreements. I understand discrimination. I mean, I, I have no problem with anybody's sexual orientation. Some of my best friends are gay. One of my, two, two of my friends are, are married, and they have adopted and raised a daughter themselves, and they're both, they're both gay. And so I go to your Title IX officer, and I said, you know, this is crazy, you know, because the test of a child's protection in this state is the best interest of a child, all right? That's the legal test. What is in the best interest of a child? So if you're going to tell me that this man's right against discrimination, the way he dresses, trumps the interest of every single child in this state, I think it's unconscionable, and I think it's wrong, and I guarantee you, or I believe, it's unconstitutional. So I asked your title officer, has this law ever been challenged? She didn't know. I said, has there ever been a constitutional test? There's lots of laws that are out there that have been legislated that have never been challenged, and get turned over all the time. You know? So, it happens. So, excuse me, and turn that right off, all right? Because I'm retired, I don't have to answer phones at all. All right. So, so we go on. I speak to your woman, you know, and, and fine, no problem. You know, listen, you guys gotta understand. I'm Italian. I'm Italian. I'm Italian Irish guy. You know, I'm kind of animated. All right. And you all know that I have a colorful life. All right. Good, bad, ugly, whatever it may be. I am who I am. I'm no angel. I don't profess to be an angel. I've, I've paid the time for my for my you know the, the, my transgressions. I paid for it, right? But I'm still being punished for it. But whatever, that's how society is, you know. We're not very forgiving. So my next step is, what am I going to do now? You know, so now I, I I've got to uh, you know what am I going to do? I'm going to file a, a lawsuit against this. Now let me give you a little background on me. I have a bachelor of specialized studies in paralegal science. I was renowned a renowned jailhouse lawyer. I've litigated all the way up to the United States Supreme Court. I've written writs of certiorari. I have published law on the federal reporters and the federal supplements. And as a matter of fact, in Guglielmo versus Cunningham, Warden of State New Hampshire, Mr. Guglielmo stated a cause of action against denial of his First Amendment rights to speech and to bring grievance to the government. And in that case, I stated a cause of action based on a chronology of legal activism and consequent institutional Retaliation, just like we have here in this school. And here's an example of it right here from your teacher, email right there. And, that, and, you're, and, and we can also argue that the, that the uh, stalking, you know, it's the same thing, because it's completely baseless. I've got witnesses that can destroy every line of it. Furthermore, within the contents of that restraining order, there is numerous identifying uh, facts about me. How did he get them? There was only one way that he got these facts, and that's by, and that was by researching me and determining who I was and researching me and whatever he did. I didn't even know the guy's name until I found a petition. I don't know what his name is. I didn't care what his name is. He, he, he was non-consequential. What was consequential for me was that they were doing, they were doing this in front of children. Now, if this was going on in a high school where, or a junior high where people have only developed their, you know, their sexual you know, autonomy, you know, autonomy, you know, hey, we're in the 21st century, man. People are people. Let them be people. Kids are going to be what they want to be. But we got to give them the chance to be that. Let them develop that. Let them make that choice. We can't be influencing that choice by stuffing something like this down their throats. So then, my next, my next move is, I go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna exhaust all administrative remedies right before I go to court. That's what I'm doing, I'm exhausting all of them, and you're all doing exactly what I think you're gonna do. You're ignoring me. Because why? Because I don't count, and you're the bureaucracy, and you got the power, all right? So we won't talk about that, and you're gonna argue otherwise, but that's my perception, that is my experience. I'm not gonna argue with you. I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying metaphorically. We're, we're, we're in an adversarial position right now, correct? Okay, that's fine. You can say, well, I'm arguing, okay? I'm, 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 I'm making my point. You might be arguing, but I'm right. I'm, I'm, I'm saying argument in the manner that I'm articulating. I didn't ask to come and talk to you. I didn't ask to come and I came here, came to file a complaint, and then people came in and asked if we would like to speak. So I didn't call the cops. You. you invited me to a meeting, and I joined it. So that's why we're here. Not because you sent out an invitation to me. So let's clarify that. Because let me finish here. So then I went to, and I'm not trying to be rude to you, man. I respect my elders, right? Excuse me. Okay, I'm not trying to be rude to you. I respect my elders. Are you making an allegation about my age? Oh, boy. No, I'm sorry. Oh, let me retract oh, that. Thank you. You're a beautiful, uh, 59-year-old woman. I'm 59 like, every, year, every year. So I'm actually 60. You know, but prison preserves you. All right. So then I go to the school board. I, I ask the speaker for the school board. You know, I... I, I 
Oh, and you were there, right? So I was speaking for the school board, you know, where do I get, I get crickets, you know? So, and then what happened was, you know, I, had, I went to the school to drop my daughter off the final time, and you know, so every time that I did something, Mr. Allard's behavior escalated. He stared at me more. He, he gave me more attention. He danced around. He provoked. He did this. He did that. And I have numerous witnesses, including my friend right here, Mr. Robinson, right? Mr. Robinson, 36 years ex-law enforcement. He works for me. He drives me because I had a, a, a little, little time when I had lost my license. You know, more bad behavior. Bad choices. So I had a driver. He drove. He was 25 years corrections and uh, 12 years as the warden of Carroll County Jail. This is the man that drives me around, and he's my friend and works for me. He has personally taken me to the school, and I had him witness. Well, I said, I said, watch what this guy's gonna do. Watch, he watched it, he's seen it. So now let's move to last Thursday, whatever it is, I believe it was February 3rd, right? I come up there. This is at the school. The school board thing is on. It's on now. It's on. It's on. It's on YouTube. Every day. Every day the hits are growing, growing, and he's standing. I pull in. He's standing down in the corner, and he's always surrounded by a bunch of teachers, like it's a, some kind of celebrity and blowing this up. And I guarantee you, if I depose your teachers, and I start asking them about whether he was taunting me or not, and if they were talking about me, and if he thought it was a joke, I guarantee you, I'm gonna develop some material that's not gonna be very beneficial. So let's, let's move forward. So he's standing there, cross-armed like this. You know what that is, right? You know what kind of body language that is? That is confrontational, defiant body language. And I know all about it because I'm a trained fighter. Martial arts, MMA, all of it. All right? So I started rolling down in my vehicle to pick up my daughter at her assigned cone. I love your security at this school. It's amazing. I think it's beautiful the way you take care of the kids. It's just remarkable. Man. Very, very impressive. I love it. Um, kids are safe there in, in respect of being dropped off. I don't know, I don't know what kind of size. However... Ah, I digress. So now I roll by him, right? I roll by him to the assigned spot, and I'm watching him in the rear view mirror, and his head is cranking right like this. I'm watching this guy, right? I'm on point all the time because I have PTSD. I spent 17 and a half years in prison. People tried to kill me, so I'm always on point. I watch it. I stop my car. His head stops directly looking at me. I'm watching him in my rear view mirror. My little girl gets in the car. I said, no, no, just hang on a minute. I'm going to exit the car for a second. I exited my vehicle. I calmly, smoothly, and slowly walked 20 yards down the driveway to your, to your official. And as I walked, your, all your teachers fled. They ran. They quickly walked away. They dispersed. And your gym, te and Blant, and your gym teacher... Your gym teacher ran to the far corner of the front of the building and turned his back like this on the whole thing. So he didn't want to see it. All right? Miss Coach, hold on. Hold on. Now, why would we do that? I don't know. Off the floor. Why am I intimidating? Why? I don't know. Oh, why do you think you're happy? I don't know. Maybe they didn't want to be around for it. Maybe they didn't know what was going to happen. You know why? Because they knew <clears throat> that he had been building this up for months, provoking me, trying to provoke um, a, a reaction from me. And, and we know. Listen, I'm, I'm talking now, right? Thank you. So, if they were standing with this man for seven months since October, which we're in February, and he's been building this up, provoking me, provoking me, they might think that. And let's not forget that he's probably telling them who I am and what. Listen, you can Google me. You can Google. I'm Google. All right. You can find all kinds of stuff about me. I've done TED talks. I've been arrested. I've done this. I've done that. And you know. It's easy to find. Am I a violent person? Have I demonstrated some violence in my life? Absolutely. In fact, I have a mantra I won't share with you. Okay? So, I walk down there. I walks up to Mr. I call him Mr. XXYY because I don't know what his name is until now. And I, said, and I said, can I take your picture? If that's the animated Italian thing again. Yeah, sorry. So I said, can I take your picture? And he says, well, what do you want your, what my, my picture? I said, I just want your picture. I like your picture. Can I have your picture? And he says, well, yeah. I said, I said, you give me legal permission to take your picture right now. Yeah. And he says, yes. And he's recording me. He's got his phone right in front of him, and he's recording me. And I'm sure that your closed circuit TV cameras in front of that school are recording me too. I turned to Miss Perkins, who is my, my daughter's um, teacher. And I said, Miss Perkins, she's a great lady. She'll love that woman. 
before I bring her flowers and food baskets and cookies on holidays. Oh yeah, I'd walk them right in. All right, plus we'll put some apples for the pizza, sure. So, it's just like my mother taught me to do. You respect your teachers. I called Miss Perkins, I said, did you hear what he said? You said, you heard him? Are you confirming that he gave me picture, permission to take this picture? And she said, yes I am. And then I says, give me a big smile, baby girl. And I snapped his picture, and I walked away. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Thank you. Did you ask me to pose? No, I believe I said, can you take a big smile? Did you ask me to pose? Not that my knowledge, no. I remember what I said, but I believe what I said, and I'm paraphrasing, that I said, um, <coughs> give me a big smile, baby girl. That's what I remember saying. But, you know, if you get the contents of this phone, we can both know exactly what I said. So I'm not saying I did. I'm not we saying have, I did. We have the building over here. It's oh, good. Wait, did you have, did you have a sound on that? Yeah. So do you have audio on that? Yeah. So there's no audio, so you can't do it. Right. But he has certain phone. And, and who cares how certain I asked him? It doesn't matter. He gave me permission to take it. Right. All right, so finally. Then you wanted to have him pose with this. Oh, that's. So you want to try and twist this around, huh? I'm just telling you. Well, let's, what well, let's you depose told. everybody and get that. We'll get the real facts then. So that's what we're going to do. Me. You want to get, you want to get you argumentative? Me? You're trying to make excuses for this guy. I, I'm not making excuses. Who cares if I ask him to pose? Hey, are you going to lose your temper? Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, oh here we go. I love the way you guys play this. <laughs> oh, he was what? so, he was so uh, aggravated. We couldn't, uh, we couldn't speak to him. He got hyperbolic. He got out of control. And oh, he was violating the, 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 the peace. And we had to remove him from the place. Go ahead. This could go a lot quicker and be expedited in a more professional way. But it's not. That's the problem. I would expect this gentleman to be released from his job. You want to spend months investigating while there's a creeper with the kids. That's the joke. No, we're both talking, right? Yeah. So by now, it's two sides. I ask you a question, yeah. you take offense to it immediately. I take offense to a misplaced question. You're trying to plant no, I'm a not. seed. No, I'm You're not. You're trying to plant a seed. Don't talk about it. I've taken no. rhetoric from Aristotle, okay? I understand that. You want to have a conversation with this one side. I want to ask another really? question. Uh, no, it's not one side. It's yes, it is. She's, she's made it clear. As as she's made it clear. As 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 yeah. She's not going to help us. Okay. Our children safe. We'll see you in court. I want to make yeah. sure you have these. Get your lawyers.